On behalf of the Bedeen Center for Near East Policy Research, I take this opportunity to welcome staff of the United States Congress and those who witnessed this event via Zoom. The context is UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, which runs 59 temporary refugee facilities since 1948 for descendants of Arabs displaced in 1948. 58% of the $1.5 billion UNRWA budget goes to their schools, which will be examined for more than 30 years. Timing of this briefing coincides with requests from the United States administration to consider renewal of funds for UNRWA. We have suggested five principles to renew those funds to UNRWA. I would ask that the Adam to put those these are five, five logical uh, steps to cancel the UNRWA war curriculum based on jihad, martyrdom, and the right of return by force of arms. Two, to, 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 it's not supposed to say create, it's supposed to say <laughs> stop paramilitary training in UNRWA schools. Three, dismiss UNRWA employees affiliated with, with terror groups. Four, resettle fourth and gen fifth generation of refugees from the 1948 war. And finally, last but not least, demand transparency, address wasted resources and cash flow to terror groups. This should be, this should be presented to each donor to the $1.5 billion budget from UNRWA. So in order to see uh, what has been taking place in the schools, in UNRWA schools of late, let's take a look at the inner workings of UNRWA schools during COVID-19. I'll ask Adam, our technical person, to run this film. It speaks for itself. And after the film, our, our expert on UNRWA education, Dr. Arnon Gross, will, will present the lethal texts used in the UNRWA schools. Thank you. UNRWA is the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. Its school system encompasses more than 400 facilities in Gaza, the West Bank, and Jerusalem. The system garners 58% of the $1.5 billion budget of UNRWA and proclaims that it educates refugee children to follow principles of nonviolence and conflict resolution in a peaceful manner. However, our monitoring of UNRWA during the COVID-19 pandemic shows the opposite. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا ومرحبا بكم طلابي الأعزاء في مدرسة ذكور الشاطئ الإعدادية باء وطلاب الصف السابع في منطقة غرب غزة التعليمية وفي قطاع غزة ككل معكم المعلم رأفت عوض لنشرح سويا ونستكمل شرح البطاقات التعلمية التي أصدرتها دائرة التعليم في الأنوروا Online UNRWA education delegitimizes Israel and glorifies those who die or kill others in the name of jihad. UNRWA presents Israel as a conquering power and colonial entity. The agency demands the right of return to pre-1948 Arab villages in what is now Israel. ثالثاً الاستعمار الحديث الذي خضعت له فلسطين ولا زالت تخضع له لن يستطيع أحد أن يجيب إجابة خاطئة بالطبع الاحتلال الصهيوني الغاشم. In other words, UNRWA indoctrinates the next generation for total war to replace Israel with a Palestinian state. Take, for example, the geography lesson taught by UNRWA teacher Rafat Awad. He teaches from a school book that bears the UNRWA logo and presents maps that omit the state of Israel. 
اولا نحدد على خريطه فلسطين المدن التاليه مدينه القدس مدينه القدس تقريبا في هذه المنطقه مدينه غزه كلكم تعرفونها هنا مدينه بئر السبع هنا في جنوب فلسطين Such a map is not only an instrument to establish boundaries, it presents territorial demands that incorporate the right of return as the main weapon of delegitimization. أنا من يافا أنا من فلوجة أنا من المشدر أنا من اللد From here, the path to rebellion is a very short step indeed تقدموا تقدموا كل سماء فوقكم جهنموا وكل أرض تحتكم جهنموا تقدموا يموت من الطفل والشيخ ولا يستسلموا the denigration of Israel as an enemy of Islam and the Palestinians is a motif that repeats itself in all school books and lessons in online UNRWA education. Here, a teacher explains the so-called intention of the Zionists to set the Al-Aqsa Mosque ablaze and destroy it. رأينا إحراق المسجد الأقصى في عاصمة فلسطين القدس في دولة فلسطين من الذي أحرق المسجد الأقصى؟ من الذي سيحرق المسجد الأقصى؟ هل سيكون إنسان مسلم؟ أم سيكون عدو الفلسطينيين الأول والأوحد حاليا؟ من بالطبع هم الصهاينة خلف هذا الفعل وخلف, وخلف هذا الحرق الذي تم للمسجد الأقصى فنقول لماذا؟ أقدم الصهاينة على حرق هذا المسجد أو أرسلوا هذا الجندي لحرق المسجد الأقصى نرى أن السبب هو محاولة الاحتلال الصهيوني طمس المعالم الأثرية الإسلامية والتاريخية والعربية في فلسطين Has the time not come for UNRWA donor nations to condition funding on an end to such indoctrination and instead to stress education for peace? I would like now to take the opportunity to present Dr. Arnon Gross, who will introduce himself and his research. Dr. Gross. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for attending this Zoom meeting. Uh, the film we have just seen has not come as a surprise to me. It is a direct result of the curriculum taught in UNRWA schools, which I have seen and have been studying for over 20 years. Uh, I'm a scholar of Middle Eastern studies, holding a PhD degree from Princeton University, I'm also a retired journalist, having served for almost 40 years at Israel's Arabic radio station. Uh, since the year 2000, I have been studying the attitude to the other and to peace uh, in various Middle Eastern curricula and have focused during the last 10 years on the Palestinian Authority school books. My following presentation deals with the latest batch of these books published in 2020, which are used in UNRWA schools in the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem that take care of some 250,000 students in grades one to 10, who make up about a quarter of the Palestinian student body in those areas, in those grades. Uh, the use of these books is problematic since they contain material negating UN values 
by the legitimizing the existence of the state of Israel, a full member of, of the United Nations organization, and demonizing both Israel and the Jews and advocating a violent struggle for the liberation of Palestine in its entirety, rather than a peaceful solution and coexistence with Israel. Thus, UNRWA betrays its commitment as a UN agency to the UN values of neutrality and peace, and that should be borne in mind, in my opinion, among the donor nations. Let's, let us to look into some examples. Please say again. Let's first say uh, the legitimization. This is not incitement. The Palestinian Authority calls itself um, a state, a, the state of Palestine conquered by um, occupied. Uh, uh, and uh, you can see the full occupation. Uh, it's not restricted to the 1967 uh, uh, lines. You can see it over here, the state of Palestine. Next, please. Palestine is the only country in this region. As you can see here, it's a, it's a lesson called Palestine Arab and Muslim. And uh, you can see for yourselves the country in one color, which is uh, with the name Palestine next to it, and the Palestinian flag, uh, uh, flag uh, 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 is found upon it. Next, please. A map of the Levant, and this is Palestine. Israel does not exist. Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and Palestine. Next, please. Uh, the name Israel is omitted. Israel, you, they used to write in uh, former books that Israel uh, kills our children and so on, and now there is no Israel, only the Zionist occupation. The Zionist occupation in this piece um, uh, concluded the, the Rhodes uh, Armistice Agreement with uh, the neighboring countries. Next, please. Uh, the territory of pre-67 territory of Israel is uh, called the uh, territories that were occupied in 1948, as you can see it here. Next, please. And uh, the Israel and the Jews in this country, 6 million uh, persons, are considered a foreign entity, colonialists, like, uh, uh, I mean, in America. And the Palestinians are compared to the original the, the American in, um, Native Americans of uh, the American continent. Next, please. Uh, the Jewish history is denied in this country. Uh, the occupier built for himself uh, um, an artificial uh, um, entity and so on and so on. You can read it for yourselves legends, fantasies, um, and, and all archaeological artifacts actually are uh, false or uh, are not uh, real, actually. So this is uh, regarding uh, Jewish history and archaeology in this country. Next, please. There are no Jewish holy places in the country. This, uh, this is uh, the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem is the Palestinian land and the Muslims' exclusive right. And just note that the, the Jews who are praying there, who pray there, are not uh, seen in this picture, which is cut in purpose in this uh, particular form. Next, please. Uh, being uh, foreigners in this country, the Jews are not considered uh, legitimate inhabitants. Tel Aviv is not here. You can see Jaffa here. No Natania, no Hedera. No Herzliya, no Rishon Lezio, nothing. And if they put in a, a certain Jewish city like Eilat, they call it by the desolate name, the desolate place they, they later, it was later built, Umar Rashash. Next, please. Hebrew is obliterated, I mean, uh, erased from a British uh, mandate uh, coin. You can see the original over here, Palestina I, 1927, it's, it's uh, erased the math book. Next, please. Jerusalem was founded by Arabs, and it's holy and uh, sacred to Muslims and Christians. Jews are not involved, according to Palestinian textbooks, this grade three textbook. Next. 
Um, and you can see the huge gap between the Jebusites, I mean, like uh, 1000 BC, uh, and the Romans, zero. I mean, uh, one AD. A huge gap of uh, ten of a uh, thousand years, which is uh, Jewish history in that city. Next, please. Demonization. Uh, you can see demonization by way of, by 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 way of self victimization. A letter of a Palestinian girl to children of the world. Uh, they have murdered my childhood. They slaughtered my childhood. Uh, they hide the. They hit the sun, spread darkness, and so on and so on. Um, victimization, pure victimization. Next, please. And uh, they are accused, Zionists are accused of uh, genocidal intentions against the Palestinians. Now, genocide is something very visible. You have a certain population, and there it's gone. Uh, for example, uh, there were Armenians in Eastern Anatolia in 1914, and their number, um, uh, in a way that they were entitled to send 15 deputies to the Ottoman parliament. In 1916, there were none. Palestinians in uh, mandatory Palestine numbered a million and 300,000 persons. And they are numbered today about, they say, 8 million, 9 million people. Where is the genocide? Next, please. Jews are demonizers, infidels, and devil aids. Aina al Fawaris ulil Aqsa to Harrirhu min Kabda til Kufri min Awani Shaitani. Next, please. Uh, and they are demonized outside the context of the conflict as enemies of Prophet Muhammad, which is enough in a traditional society like the Palestinian to make them eternal enemies of Islam and, and the Palestinian and all Muslims, actually. And there are uh, uh, attributed traits such as uh, treachery and uh, cunning and uh, so what's so. Next, please. Uh, Jews are portrayed of God's prophets and by extension of uh, enemies of God himself. They should be fought against. They should be annihilated, actually, as enemies of God. Next, please. What about peace? Next, please. Uh, this is the only, only place in Palestine, all Palestinian textbooks using UNRWA schools in which peace with Israel is mentioned. It, referred, it is a reference to Arafat's letter to uh, Rabin, uh, prior to the uh, assignment of, of the, the treaty or the accords, or Oslo Accords in 1993. Now you can see full recognition of Israel and uh, renounce of terror, anything, uh, fine, but they don't use it as, um, uh, as a tool for recognizing Israel or making peace with Israel or talking about peaceful resolution of the conflict uh, uh, in other places in the whole curriculum. Next, please. This is the Palestinian Authority's uh, national anthem. It's full of uh, violence, volcano of my revenge, weapons fire, and there is a direct um, instigation or uh, uh, violent uh, action. I shall live as a fidai. Fidai is a member of the Palestinian armed organizations. I will live as a fidai, I shall continue as a fidai, and I shall die as a fidai. This is uh, incitement to violence in Palestinian school books used in UNRWA schools. Next, please. This is how it is shown to first graders. Next, please. And it's not limited. The struggle for liberation is not limited to the 67 lines or the West Bank and Gaza. It includes Jaffa and Haifa as well. Uh, we have carried the ember of the revolution to Haifa, to Jaffa. So this is part and parcel of the liberation process. Or the Next, please. And this is a language exercise. It would be appropriate for Jaffa to return to our Boston. 
Next, please. Ah, this is a very, this is an artifact sold to tourists in Bethlehem and it says free Palestine. And you can see very clearly that there is no room for Israel in free Palestine. So it's a book from 2020, grade three. Next, please. And the return of the refugees or their descendants to Israel is not a return to Israel and living with, in peace with the neighbors, as it said, as it is said in the 194 resolution of the UN. Now going to, to liberate that part in order to return to it with the Palestinian flag. Next, please. And this is as well, they're going to return or uh, to return to a sovereign homeland, namely Palestine. There will be no Israel when they return. Next, please. Terror is part and parcel of the liberation process. You can see here for yourselves. Let's read it uh, together. Um, it's a four page uh, lesson in grade five. Um, that was a huge terrorist operation in 1978 against an Israeli civilian bus. Over 30 Israelis uh, were killed, murdered, actually. And the text says, I mean, it speaks for itself. Uh, in front of our Palestinian history, replete with many names of martyrs. And among them is the martyr Dalal al Morabi. This is this lady. Uh, and this is it. Terror is part and parcel of everything here. Next, please. Uh, this is a very explicit reference to the question, what should be done with the uh, surviving Jews after the liberation of Palestine? This is a poem for grade three. And I shall sacrifice my blood in order to water the land of the noble ones and remove uh, the usurper, that is Israel, from my country, and to exterminate the foreigners defeated remnant. Uh, they sing it in class. Can you just uh, uh, open it for us, uh, please, Adam? Yeah? Is it? I can't see anything. Um, can I return to my Adam? Yeah, well, important note in the, this is uh, the book from, great, from uh, 2019, the latest and uh, last one. In 2020, they abolished it. They replaced that uh, poem with another one. And um, I ask myself a question, do our efforts begin to bear fruit? Because there have been some changes, and this is one of them. I think the, the best change I've seen. Uh, let's move over to the conclusions. Adam, please, next. The Palestinian Authority textbooks used by UNRWA in its schools delegitimize the existence of the State of Israel, a full member state of the United Nations organizations, and the very presence of its 6 million Jewish citizens in the country. The peer school books used by UNRWA demonize both Israel and the Jews to the point of sheer anti-Semitism. 
These very books never advocate a peaceful solution to the present Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Instead, they call for a violent struggle for liberation, which is not limited by the 67 lines in which terror plays a central part. Being a UN agency, UNRWA is committed to neutrality and peace, but its use of such school books contradicts that commitment and makes UNRWA a full accomplice in the PA anti-Semitic indoctrination. Moreover, UNRWA betrays its sacred obligation towards the well-being of the Palestinian children and youth under its care by preparing them for war against their Israeli counterparts. This kind of education should stop immediately and the donor state should have a say in this matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Arnold Gross. And uh, it's very important to understand the implications of what Dr. Gross is saying. It's the donor nations that make these decisions. Uh, we, our agency has had six meetings with the Office of the Secretary General of the United Nations, who defers to the donor nations. And if the United States again becomes a donor nation, it speaks for itself. I'd like to introduce another expert, uh, Jonathan Halevi, who will speak for himself and introduce himself. Please, Dr. Halevi. Hi, my name is Jonathan Halevi. I'm uh, a retired uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel in the IDF. Um, used to work with the Israeli intelligence, military intelligence for uh, almost uh, 20 years. Um, after I retired, I continued to do uh, in intensive research on the Palestinian affairs and also Islamic uh, radicalism in the Middle East and in North America and specifically in Canada. I've been uh, doing research and gathering information on UNRWA and Hamas influence in uh, UNRWA schools. And these findings about the schools and the indoctrination in, uh, in these schools in the Gaza Strip is no, it does not come in surprise to anyone. Hamas, uh, with its uh, uh, organizations, uh, work freely in, uh, in UNRWA schools in the Gaza Strip. And uh, we can even say that Hamas took over of these organizations from within with its staff with people who affiliated with Hamas. Uh, just a, a very um, a glaring example for that, it's uh, one of the uh, leading members of uh, the employees uh, sector in Honora schools, uh, who used to be the head of the, uh, the Arab Employees Union uh, for many years. Uh, in, in the three, two years ago, he was uh, uh, elected to a member of the political bureau of Hamas, which is the uh, leadership of Hamas in the Gaza Strip and elsewhere. So, and we, in our research, found that um, uh, there are uh, some of the um, uh, leading members of the, uh, of, uh, um, uh, of in Oldham schools, uh, employees in Oldham schools, like uh, the principals and uh, educators, et cetera, uh, were affiliated and even members of terrorist organization, including uh, Hamas, the Islamic Jihad, and uh, the Popular Committees, another terrorist, Palestinian terrorist organization. The position taken by the uh, sector, the uh, employee sector uh, union of uh, UNRWA in Gaza, UNRWA schools in Gaza, uh, is um, taking very harsh position against Israel and publicly support the jihad and the uh, armed struggle against Israel to liberate Palestine. And when they say Palestine, they mean the entire state of Israel. And, um, and also, you can, we could find uh, statements against the Jews, anti-Semitic statement on the social media. Hamas is operating freely in UNRWA schools, and that's, that's being uh, uh, accomplished by the what is called in Arabic Al Qutla Islamiyah, which is the Islamic bloc, the uh, the um, uh, this is the youth uh, uh, arm of Hamas, and what they do is very simple. They bring guides from uh, university, and they are being appointed to be the Amir, the guide of this organization, this uh, Hamas group in school. They organize and mobilize the students 
And the pattern is uh, repeat itself. They bring the um, organizing activities with the students. And the end goal is to bring them to the mosque to pledge allegiance to the, the Muslim Brotherhood movement and later to Hamas. They become activists with, uh, with Hamas. And we saw in our research that many of them, uh, after two or three, four years, found themselves as, as an operatives of uh, Al-Qassam Brigade, which is the military or terrorist wing of Hamas. These activities inside uh, UNRWA schools, um, in some cases, in many cases, are directly affiliated with Hamas, like commemoration of the death of Ahmad Yassin, the founder of Hamas, and other events that are uh, also affiliated with the goals and the, of, the, of the Islamic uh, movement. It's not, uh, not only Hamas is operating a school, also the Islamic Jihad with the same, with a, a parallel organization, the uh, youth, youth organization of the Islamic Jihad. And we could see that they, they are working with cooperation uh, and consent of the uh, principals in schools. So it's not done, uh, it's not a clandestine uh, activity you know, behind the scene, etc. No, it, it is uh, approved by the principal, in many cases approved by the principals themselves, and they are welcoming this operative, this activist to, uh, to, uh, to connect and uh, uh, mobilize the students. So the problem is two layers. One is the indoctrination, and the second one is the uh, uh, freedom of the uh, Hamas to operate in UNRWA schools. Thank you very much, Jonathan Halevi. Jonathan has been working with us for 20 years. You can see our website, israelbehindthenews.com. See, see the work on the subjects of, that Dr. Gross and, and the Jonathan Halevi have been discussing, the curriculum, all schools. And uh, ironically, we were able to get the school books after a request we made of Yasser Arafat, who said that they would be filled with peace. I'd like to now entertain questions that congressional staffers might have and like to, we'd like to call on them first, uh, people who would uh, just uh, raise your hand so we can see who you are, and uh, we'll recognize you for a question, please. Um, Adam, I don't see the, the whole, all, all, the, all the questions, so perhaps you see uh, the questions in front of you there. Okay, now we did receive a question on the chat. Why not have UNRWA be replaced by the UN High Commission of Refugees. Well, what we have suggested, we've been working on our agency, the Center for Near East Policy Research, recently renamed the Badin Center for Near East Policy Research for, for my brother, um, has been working on this for 30 years. And all of our suggestions uh, to, uh, to make a, a change to the High Commission of Refugees have been rejected because the General Assembly will not accept it. However, the good news is that UNRWA is free to adopt new principles if the donor nations would request. And if the donor nations to UNRWA were to request that UNRWA start allowing people who live in refugee camps to leave refugee camps, to be rehabilitated, to, to go into better humanitarian situations, nothing would stop that. As a matter of fact, in 1983, Israel suggested a massive program for rehabilitation and in uh, and, and, and humanitarian situations, uh, not, to, not to kick the Arabs out of the area, but in the area where they're living in. And this was, uh, this was readily and uh, received by the Palestinian Arab population. However, the United Nations uh, vetoed it as a violation of their inalienable right of return. So there, so, so much for logic in the Middle East. Does anyone else who would like to ask a question? Now that we, we don't have questions from congressional staffers, I see we have a few here. But if, you, if there's anyone else who'd like to ask a question, please identify yourself and uh, we'll unmute, unmute you. Adam, do you see anyone uh, there asking a, asking a question? Uh, okay, the question asked here is, what has been the position of the, uh, we got on the chat, of the Biden administration on UNRWA? The Biden administration has been considering the possibility of asking for renewed funding of UNRWA with no restrictions. 
so far that has been in the informal system and not in the formal system. Um, now, the uh, another question that was asked, with the Abraham Accords, <clears throat> is there an opportunity to work with the UAE, United Arab Emirates on this? And uh, the, the questioner says, it's my understanding that the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, has, um, has uh, withdrawn its support for UNRWA. That is correct. Our agency issued uh, no less than 10 reports about the, about the UAE support for UNRWA, and that uh, influenced, we think, the UAE decision, because you really can't stand on two weddings, on the one hand, to support, um, to, to support uh, a peaceful solution and, and, and to stop terrorism, on the other hand, to be UNRWA until recently, until three months ago, uh, the United Arab Emirates was the leading donor to UNRWA in the Arab world, well, no more. And uh, basically, it was, it was a, from our sources in the UAE said that they wanted to establish more of a, um, uh, more of a, uh, how shall I say, credibility uh, with Israel. Uh, and that's what, exactly what happened. Now, um, someone asked a very important question. Uh, would UNRWA change its policy if the U.S. conditioned funding on the changes that we, we suggest? There's no question about it that money talks and that if the United States were to lead a process, lead a process to change policy as a, as a condition, for example, the curriculum that Arnon has presented, which is, by the way, a new curriculum from the last four years. We've been, we've been getting all the UNRWA school books ever since the Palestinian Authority uh, decided to issue its own books on, on August 1st, 2000. Uh, and there was, a, there was a wish that it would go even further, but it has gone further in the opposite direction of peace. If the, if the enlightened countries of the world that give money to UNRWA to say, we're not going to give you money so long as you continue this curriculum, it would obviously infect them. No country in the world has done so. The opposite has happened. The nation that is now the leading, leading funder of UNRWA is Germany. And uh, I flew to Germany together with Dr. Gross and with the uh, Rabbi Abraham Cooper of the Wiesenthal Center. We met with six political parties of, of, uh, of Germany. And after we left, they doubled their funding. Uh, Germany doubled their funding. I don't see any uh, Jewish or non-Jewish organization standing up to Germany and saying, 76 years after Auschwitz, is this the kind of education you're supporting? And again, supporting it with no... Um, uh, with no... Um, Restrictions. Now, someone else has sent in a question. There have been reports that European countries and Arab countries are cutting their support to UNRWA. We haven't seen any uh, documentation of such. There have been discussions in the European Parliament, but not in the European Union. They must distinguish between the European Parliament, which is which is a which is a, a, a parliament for free discussion and very sympathetic to this issue, uh, but the European Union is now the number three supporter of UNRWA after. Um, after Germany and the, U the UK, so there is no uh, there is no no change there as far as we can see. We would love it to be, but uh, we're not based on wishful thinking. And this is, now, um, I, the the question was also asked: Is there is UNRWA still employing Hamas? So well, here's the way it works: the Hamas organization. Runs, the, it runs a slate of candidates to run the Teachers Association and the Workers Association, and they receive more than 90% of the votes every three years. So the influence is very clear. Now, UNRWA is not supposed to engage the services of any member of Hamas. Uh, Congressman Chris Smith, and I believe, if I'm not, not mistaken, the Congressman Brad Sherman, if I'm not mistaken, uh, worked on legislation to, to make sure that wouldn't happen. However, the, the Hamas slate, which runs the, the, uh, the Workers Association and the Teachers Association, continues to do so, and they have tremendous uh, influence. Now, uh, UNRWA, uh, when we rejects this, uh, they say they check the identities and the criminal records of everyone who works for them. Uh, we haven't seen that. If the, it would be interesting if UNRWA or to publish the studies they, they say that they have done concerning uh, the, the criminal or terrorist background of, um, of their workers. Now, someone else asked if there have been any public statements 
uh, from the U.S. administration concerning UNRWA. We haven't seen them yet. We've seen sources. We've seen quotations. We have not, not yet seen um, public statements from the U.S. government. The, the information coming to us is that next week or the week after, very, very shortly, UNRWA will be, uh, the United States will be renewing the funding to UNRWA uh, unilaterally without any conditions. The purpose of our coming to Washington, even virtually, is to raise this issue. And by the way, so there, the, I just got another question. <clears throat> Why don't you just abandon UNRWA or abolish UNRWA? Well, you can't abolish UNRWA because UNRWA is, is um, beholden to the United Nations um, General Assembly. What you can do is, is to ask the uh, donor nations to, 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 to add, add conditions. Uh, let me repeat the, 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 the conditions that were suggested are one, and these are policy conditions. Uh, make sure that there is no military uh, training in the schools. Two, that the curriculum uh, be, be, be set aside. And this is a new curriculum. Three, uh, that, um, that people who want to leave UNRWA, UNRWA camps, who are stuck there, 82% of the people in Gaza live in these UNRWA camps and they, are, they, are, they live there under duress. They cannot leave those camps. And last but not least, there could be a peace education. You know that there are at least five peace education programs suggested by, the, by Palestinian Arabs, independent of the Palestinian Authority, but they're not allowed to be implemented. And that is a very serious issue. So these are, easy, these are conditions that the U.S. could, could place for uh, their aid. People who would like to write to us, by the way, um, IsraelBehindTheNews.com, our, 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 um, our uh, email is on, our email and phone number is on our website. I'd be delighted to uh, correspond with you live. We have made about a dozen trips to Capitol Hill, and uh, we've developed relationships with both sides of the aisle. And um, that's, that's uh, something that I, I believe can, that's an, an example of how um, uh, uh, how democracy can work.